Welcome to the Look Good, Move Well podcast. All right, well, welcome back to the show, everybody. As we sat here prepping for this podcast, we have just recorded two episodes prior to this. It was time for our third episode, and we both kind of gave, we all gave each other sort of a blank stare. What are we going to talk about? Uh, Because we answered our listener um, question last episode. Prior to that, we addressed a topic that we've been uh, covering in other media outlets that we have. So um, we kind of knew where we were going with the first two, but then we were like, what do we do? And so what was the recommendation? What did you suggest? Who suggested that? I did. Yes. Yeah. Which was what? Chat GPT, baby. <laughs> <laughs> so we opened up Chat GPT. Marcus writes, please give me five topics about functional bodybuilding and or business that would be compelling for a podcast. Yeah. And we got six. And one of them was pretty darn pretty compelling. Pretty on the money. Pretty on the money. Go and robot. I, yeah. And it, you know what? It sparked a lot of uh, thoughts that I've been actually thinking about around this for specifically pump programming. So we went with the functional bodybuilding topic, not the business topic here. But shall we, should we, talk, should we, before we, before we dive into the actual topic, yeah. what was the last prompt that you gave chat GPT? Oh, well, I'm deep in chat GPT right now. I'm all up in there because I'm getting chat GPT to help me program a JavaScript to do a very important business function that's probably going to save us 20 to 40 hours a week once it's all finished. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to code this particular language, so I'm working with it back and forth to have it help me develop scripts and code that will be operational. So my last prompt, it wouldn't make any sense to you, but it was along the lines of formatting files and uh, getting naming conventions right. It was very dry, but I'm very excited about it. Sweet. (laughs) Yeah. Sweet. Nate, what was your last prompt? I think it was, give, give me the best viewing order for watching all the animated series, The Clone Wars. Wow. Mm. Give me the best viewing order to watch all the animated series, The Clone Wars. That's pretty good. Cool. That's good. Yeah. You'll have to report in on how it did. Um, sometimes I, I just, like, what like I kind of want to just be Nate for a little while. Yeah. Just get into his his viewing cadence and r- rhythm and routine and just sort of there's a lot of good stuff out there in the uh entertainment world which I don't get a lot of opportunity to watch and I just kind of wish I could just be Nate for a little while yeah. cuz he he really knows how to you know get out there in the in the in the entertainment world landscape and and mm-hmm. He's, he's a, yeah. So anyhow. Okay. Well, my last prompt was this prompt. So I don't know, actually don't know what my previously last prompt was to. Yeah. Now I'm curious. What, what do you talk to chat GPT about? Can I even look up? Oh, oh yes. I wrote, oh, I, I'm not, that's kind of embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's embarrassing. Um, <laughs> I was, oh, I was, I actually, here, here we go. I, I wrote, can, can you write me a five day per week training split for bodybuilding program, uh, complete with a warm up, three to four main exercises and a finisher for each sen- section. Uh, this should be balanced and cover full body over the whole week. So I wanted to see, you know, what's the state, the, the status of, uh, yeah, of, it's programming knowledge of programming Prepping skeletons. Yeah. Chops. Yeah. It's chops. Yeah. Um, it's, 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 it's pretty, I mean, it's, it's interesting if you, you know, yeah. yeah Do you ever try things like pretend you are Charles Poliquin and you are working with a top, you know, strength athlete? What recommendations would you give? Like I have kind of I've done like give me this answer as so so somebody yeah. and I've used Charles Poliquin before. Mm-hmm. I like the ones I actually I was talking to Megan the other day and I was like we were talking about we were like half talking about cryptocurrency and I was like what Bitcoin? We got uh, blockchain, and I don't know. I don't really know any what, NFTs. What, what is this? And I was like, <laughs> basically, explain to me what this is, as if I was an eleven-year-old. Yeah. And it like, if you throw that last little, as if I was eleven mm-hmm. years old, it breaks it down. Really, it really breaks it down in a very compelling and easy to follow way. So, mm. um, 
Oh, and look, maybe it listened to what I said because it just, here's an example. How to make an HTTP request in JavaScript. (laughs) (laughs) Anyhow, so here's the prompt that we actually just arrived at. Functional bodybuilding. Mastering bodyweight exercises for functional bodybuilding. Heck yeah. How about a conversation about how bodyweight exercises can be used to build functional strength, including Mm. tips for progression and how to adapt bodyweight exercises for different fitness levels. And this feels absolutely right on on point. For me too. Um, and I'll just give an example as to why. Uh, two weeks ago, Cliff was in town. We went down to uh, Santa Cruz to yep. visit our friends that um, own and operate RPM training company as well as Adam, our uh, software partner. And we did a workout in their gym. And one of the exercises was a deficit push-up with band assistance and we posted those uh videos on social media and i got a lot of people wondering like what the hell's going on here like why are you doing a deficit with the band and why are you doing this and push up body weight exercise that was clearly manipulated in a way to achieve some result and a lot of people were confused like why are you doing a deficit with the band like what's happening here and so uh i'd love to talk about like maybe that specific example, but that leads really well into talking about body weight exercises in general and how they have a place in a functional bodybuilding program for hypertrophy or for, you know, building functional strength in these positions. Absolutely. Why does it get you excited? It gets me super excited because I do a lot of resistance training, obviously with barbells and dumbbells and kettlebells, but I work on some specific skills as part of my training, both for fun and variety and also for strength and adaptations. And one example is the strict ring muscle up, which Mm -hmm. I just got my first recently and booyah. And now I'm working towards a handstand walk, slowly progressing towards that. And I do a lot of strict pull-ups, which are all body weight. And I think a lot about how those different positions and shapes and building strength in those really has such a great transfer to so many things where it helps develop these really subtle aspects of how to move my body in space and how to control my balance and helps me attune to different muscle groups that are working at different times and helps me connect to, you know, a hollow body position in the pull up and the handstand push up and all these different things that can help me stabilize for Olympic lifting and help me transfer that to so many different aspects. So there's just a whole world of body weight only training to really explore that has carry over to so many cool things. It sure does. Yeah. I mean, uh, just take a look at the people out there that are really taking body weight training to like, you know, very high levels. Mm. And it's, it's, it's very compelling. I mean, I, any given day of the week, I would much rather watch somebody who's like a level 10 calisthenics person than a level 10 bodybuilder, you know, lift weights. Like, and I'm not, that's, that's, I I love bodybuilding. I do mostly that kind of training these days, but you know, it's, it's not the most beautiful thing to watch. Like somebody just repping out dumbbells on the bench press versus somebody who's doing a planche (laughs) push-up. You're like, how are they levitating? Like what is happening there? Like that is insane. Gravity, anyone. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it's like, there's, I, I remember a quote from like a gymnast, you know, who's like a professional gymnast and they were like, you <clears throat> like, um, there are things that like, the, I, I'm going to, it's not the, an exact quote, but it was something to the effect of like what these kids that have done gymnastics since they were five years old, like the, the strength and control that they've built Like if you try and do gymnastics as like an adult, like you will never, you have, you'll never access those things. Like those are just, that's not there for you to, to gain. Now, whether there's absolute truth to that, there's clearly like a, you know, some, some very realistic, you know, truths in there, Mm -hmm. which is to achieve some of that strength through, let's just talk about like the kids who, the, the boys who learn to do the rings when they're growing up, like that 
if I try and go learn a strict, you know, a, an iron cross now at this age, like th that muscle development takes so long that, and in such a specific way, and there's such muscle memory to that. That's like, it's almost, it'd almost be impossible, you know, to achieve at this late in life. So there's just something very compelling when you see high level body weight, you know, athletes uh, who have a command of their movement. And then how do we bring that all the way down to like the basics of like, hey, can you do a push up? Can you do a pull up? Mm -hmm. um, and then once you can do these things, or even if you can't do them, how do we use those movements for training to improve strength, improve muscle mass, and give you options to stay moving in life and anywhere you want to be. Mm -hmm. And that's really, um, that's a hard one because it's pretty easy to understand how you regress and progress a dumbbell bench press. You grab the two and a half pound dumbbells or you grab the 125 pound dumbbells, like, and you can go anywhere in between. But how do we progress and regress a push up? And, you know, when you do dumbbell bench press with your elbows wide versus elbows narrow versus incline versus decline, like that makes changes. How do we get those same changes when we're doing push ups? How do we get those same variants when we do dips or when we use rings or when we're pulling ourselves from below a bar to above a bar? And, and then let's get into like, yeah, of course you can get into more complex things like a handstand or a handstand pushup. How do we replicate a handstand pushup in a different, maybe regressed variation that allows us to get the value of a handstand pushup in the muscle groups that we want to train and so forth. So I think it's, it's, uh, it's probably much harder to be, uh, be prescriptive about body weight exercises to get the target strength muscle adaptations that you want versus with weights or with, you know, machines. Um, maybe that's why a lot of people like don't, tackle it they're like oh that's calisthenics or that's for gymnasts like but it's like it's also for bodybuilding it's also for functional training yeah and um i think it's like a kind of a sort of like a mystery to people and that's why you see more people wanting to coach snatch technique than they want to coach push-up technique or right. dip technique it's like i don't really know like i don't really know the nuances of this it's it's kind of difficult to understand right well, when I think about how body weight movements fit into the functional bodybuilding training methodology, there are so many things that are exciting to me because I feel like we haven't talked about them for a while, but they've always been such a core part of how we train. One is control. So we use a lot of time under tension, but controlling your body in space is really the first aspect to all of that. And we've talked about stability versus instability as it relates to progression. So a plank on the floor is more stable than a plank on the rings, for example, and that can be a progression that we use. And we talk about range of motion and being strong in end ranges, which is exactly this deficit push-up scenario. So how do you start to think about how to categorize body weight movements and how they fit into your prescriptions and how they may go along with weights or what people really need to know about using those in a more functional capacity. Hmm. Well, I think um, what I, I guess what I, I, what I've been thinking about a lot lately is these, these movements, body weight movements will stick to upper body, body weight movements. Dip, pull up, and push up will just be pretty. Um, we'll keep it relatively simple with those, as opposed to talking about, you know, levers and mm -hmm. uh, muscle ups and yeah, more classic hands. gymnast stuff. Mm -hmm. um, is each of these exercises has let's let's say like you know general muscle groups that they train. Um, you know, with the dip, there's chest, shoulder, triceps. With the pull-up, there's 
potentially biceps, rear delts, upper back, lats, with a push-up, chest, tricep, shoulder. So we have a general understanding of like, this is what we want people to be able to train. And we want to be able, we want to train it in this range of reps, let's say, because we can prescribe rep ranges with the goal of like, with this rep range, if you max yourself out in that rep range, we can get this desired outcome of the muscle. So if we're like building a functional bodybuilding program, hey, the goal is to get, you know, it's chest hypertrophy. So we need to, we want to hit the 10 to 20 rep range and somewhere in there, we want you to kind of get close to failure. Okay. I want you to do that with a push-up. It's like, well, I can't do that many push-ups. No, no, no. I want you to do that with the push-up movement. But yeah, a push-up is not defined as toes and hands on the floor with a body, you know, in a perfect line going down and up. A push-up is defined as we're going to talk about it is just going through that range of motion and more or less a horizontal pushing pattern where your hands are fixed on a surface, the floor, a couple of weight plates, a bench, whatever, and your body is moving in space. We call that a closed chain pushing exercise where your hands are not moving, but your body's moving versus flipping upside down. Your body's not moving and now your hands are moving. You're doing a bench press. That's an open chain exercise. So we want to do a closed chain horizontal pushing exercise. That's a push up. And I want to manipulate your body however we need to in order to get you to hit 10 to 15 reps that are hard and challenging. So for, let's say, okay, we'll just take three examples. There's the one example of somebody who needs to put a 40 pound weight vest on and needs to do that with their hands on three inch plates so that they get added range of motion plus the added weight of the, of the vest. And when they get to rep number 12, they fail. Mm -hmm. Cool. That's in, that's, that's like, Equate that to the person who can do the 100-pound dumbbells on a bench press. Right. Then the person who does 50-pound dumbbells on the bench press, they turn over to do push-ups. And just doing a traditional hands on the floor, chest touch the ground, back to the top push-up, they can get 15 reps before they fail. Awesome. That person found the right position, found the right rep range, found the right stimulus. Then you got the person who's really only lifting five pounds on the, dum on the dumbbell bench press. They don't have a lot of strength yet. They haven't developed a lot of body awareness. If you make them do a push-up, even a push-up on their knees, they're going to not have good mechanics. Their technique's going to fall apart. They're going to feel it in the wrong part of their shoulder. They're going to feel like their back is hurting because they're arching. They're going to feel it in all the wrong places, and they're not going to feel it in their chest and their shoulders and their triceps. In order to get that person into a comfortable, safe position, you're going to have to do two things, let's say. You're going to fix a bar that's about waist high, so their hands are going to be on a bar. They're going to do an elevated push-up. And you might have to like wrap a band around their waist to assist them, right? So you got like a band-assisted elevated push-up. And when they're in that position, they can lower and, and raise themselves in a perfectly straight line. They have great mechanics. They feel it in their chest and their shoulders. They're getting a good pump. They get 15 reps and then they have to stop. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. So we just took the movement and we, I thought about it like, what's the movement that's going to address the movement pattern, the muscle groups, the general things that we're trying to train? And then how can we adapt this for a di a different people so that they can get that feeling? And it always comes down to what, assistance, modification, adjustments need to be made so that they can execute great technique. Because with great technique, the right muscles get trained and the, the wrong muscles don't get fatigued. That's key. That's that's any exercise. Is what position in the push-up gets you to feel your chest, your triceps, and your shoulders getting pumped and not your low back feeling any pressure and not your elbows and your shoulders feeling tweaky? Okay, that's beautiful. Go back to the example when we were down in Santa Cruz. When I do a deficit push-up, I get a great stretch on my chest. I get a great stretch on my shoulders. I can feel them working. But when I when I go deep deficit under my own body weight, 
I can only get like six or eight reps before I start to like compensate and start to like try and, you know, basically hit failure. But I want to get 15 reps. So what can I do? Add a band around me. Now I can do 12 to 14 reps with a three to four inch deficit. The deficit's great for me because it stretches the heck out of the target muscles. It gives me a better, you know, it helps me train end range strength in my shoulder, but I need a little bit of assistance to do it. You know, okay, I I discovered my best push-up variety for this particular, you know, goal of getting a pump in my chest and my shoulders and my triceps. Yeah. How do you decide when you want to use assistance with body weight? Because I was just thinking about my conditioning piece from today. It was AMRAPs with three strict dips, six toes to ring and some ski. And I was hitting failure on the strict dips because I had so many rounds to get through. Mm -hmm. At what point do you say, I'm going to start strict and then maybe add a band or yeah. I'm going to start with the band and keep that the whole way or try to do as many as I can and go to singles. Well, my thought around this has changed over the years and I think it can be different for different people. Um, you know, in my CrossFit days when performance outcomes and being able to execute movements just to get them done was the goal, then I probably would have said like, well, there's really no point in me using any assistance. Like I need to, I need to figure out even when I'm fatigued, how to get these done. Mm -hmm. um, and I think back, like that was the mindset that I was in then that was important for the sport because, you know, when I'm in a competition and my triceps and my shoulders are kind of smoked and blown up and I still have 50 ring dips to do, like, I don't get to like call in, wave in the band, yeah. like, Hey, I need a band. Like <laughs> right. what I, what I had to do back then was one, you know, take a break, let my triceps recharge. But I also had to learn like, okay, if I do handstand pushups this way, it tires out my shoulders more. But if I do them kind of this way and I like move my elbows a little bit, it's more triceps. And if I do them this way, like, you know, you kind of learn ways to compensate for movement patterns so that you can get the work done. And that is a very effective strategy if that's the goal is to just get the work done. You would talk to a, let's, let's flip it and say, okay, I'm a bodybuilder and I'm doing handstand pushups specifically to train my shoulders. So at rep 10, I gas out on my shoulders and my triceps start to take over. And now I'm just kind of finishing out like with wide elbows, I'm just doing tricep press ups and they look like handstand pushups, but they're just all triceps. So the bodybuilder would say like, well, stop at 10 reps. Like don't do 11, 12, 13. Like you're not, this isn't, this isn't the exercise to train your triceps. Mm -hmm. The CrossFitters like the goal is to get 20 reps. I don't care what it takes. Yeah. Like do whatever you can. Yeah. Who's right? Nobody's right. You know, it's like, what's your purpose? What's your goal? So my purpose more lately is like, in the CrossFit days, get it done however you can. Hopefully over time with good technique and you build up a lot of capacity, then you get to use your bigger muscles like your shoulders for more reps before they gas out. Mm -hmm. And in a perfect world, you're capable of doing a hundred perfect handstand pushups with the big movers like your shoulders and the competition only has 60 in it. And so you just, you're just good to go. Like yeah. you've got a hundred rep capacity for a 60 rep workout you're going to win. You're going to do really well. That was always the goal there. But almost invariably, we would come up against a an event where it would pu always push us past our capacity and we would have to start to work under fatigue and we would have to start to compensate and just do whatever we could to get there. And this is where like you're like, whoa, that form looked really ugly on the last rep. It's like, but the weight got up and that's what we're getting points for. It's not my form. But the bodybuilder's like, dude, your form sucked. That means you weren't even using the right muscles like and that's not the goal like the goal is not to to get 10 reps the goal is to get 10 reps that light up your quads and so if you stop feeling your quads after five reps because you're hitting fatigue then you need to use some assistance or you need to lower the weight or you need to do something so in your case it's like i'm doing a functional pump conditioning workout where the focus is triceps shoulders and abs i've got dips GHD sit-ups. So I get to five minutes into this thing and I'm like gassed out and I'm fatigued. 
And now I'm starting to like arch my back on my dips and I'm doing all kinds of weird gyrations to try and get the dips. I'm not getting a shoulder and a tricep pump anymore. I'm getting some other thing. It'd be a great time to put in a band, Mm -hmm. a great time to maybe adjust. And if I had a a dip machine, go and use the dip machine. Right. And this is where, like I was saying, my shift, my focus has shifted. It's like, when does the muscle that I actually, or the movement or the, the parts of my body that I actually want to train, when do they reach their limit? And don't go beyond that limit. Or if the prescription is asking you to keep accumulating reps, then you need to make an adjustment. This is like, you know, um, another example of this is uh, my first set on dumbbell bench press for 10. I have to do four sets of 10. My first set might be at 70 pounds. But then after that set, I'm not getting 10 more reps at 70 pounds without doing something weird to my form. So my second set is at 65 pounds. I still get the 10 reps. And then my third set might be at 60 pounds. I'm going down another five pounds. And then my last set is also at 60. And and by doing that, we call that like a reverse pyramid, which is like your heaviest set was first and you're lightening up so that you maintain good technique and you hit your reps and maintaining good technique and also target musculature. Those go hand in hand. Good technique means you're using the right muscles to move the thing. This is a bodybuilding perspective. It's not CrossFit performance perspective. Like nobody cares when Dmitry Klokov is snatching, you know, world record. Like he doesn't stand up and be like, did you feel that in your upper yeah. back? Like did that, did you feel it in your quads? Like <laughs> it's like, did you stand up with it overhead? Uh-huh. And that's all that matters. Right. And, you see this even at elite level athletes when they push their threshold, you know, at lightweights, everything looks perfect, but at high, there's slight deviations. That's even the best in the world. Yep. Now you look at somebody who's an average athlete or, you know, a, a recreational athlete, when they get near their threshold, it could look like a different exercise. You're like, what What exercise did you just do? Like, I'm pretty sure that was not a squat. <laughs> I think that was a good morning and there was maybe a deadlift in there somehow and I don't know how you managed to bench press at the same time. This is really crazy. Yeah. Okay, so looking at how I'm going to say the dreaded most people, <laughs> how <laughs> most people approach body weight, push-ups, your pull-ups, your dips, whatever you might see in a conventional gym or even maybe a little bit of bodybuilding style, because I know a lot of people train that way. Looking at that from a functional bodybuilding lens, what do you wish you would see more of, or what do you think that people should take into consideration for those? Yeah. I wish there was a lot more assisted movements that were happening. Mm. I really do. I mean, I'm, you know, I'll speak for myself. Like I have incorporated a lot more band work in my dips, in my pull-ups, and now my push-ups even. And, you know, I'm very capable of doing a lot of pull-ups and a lot of dips without assistance. Yeah. But to do them with great technique, aka muscle recruitment, um, you know, it's interesting. Like, when I do like a, a a very strict set of pull-ups where I'm really focusing on getting good lat engagement and upper back and not taking over with my bicep and not like um, changing my posture, like being able to lean back the entire time, like I max out at 12, maybe 12 reps, 13 reps on a good day right now. But if you say, hey, go do as many pull-ups as you can, I can get 20 something. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know, somewhere in the 20s, I would imagine, maybe 30. So what's the difference? It's like, well, at 12, when those muscles and that posture fails and fatigues, like I start to adopt a different posture and I use more biceps and I use, you know, more upper back muscles and I I just change my mechanics, which um, is not, not my goal right now. So that's where it's like, if I implement more bands, if I implement more um, assistance, you know, variations Mm -hmm. or, or really just sort of like let go of my ego and be like, I don't really need to do 20 reps. I am getting a perfect stimulus at 10 reps. That that's, that's what I think would be worth seeing more of. And I think people would get a lot more benefit and they'd have less aches and pains because it's when you push beyond those to just sort of achieve 
ego reps in an exercise like a pull up or a dip where you you know you can get it done but you know there's a cost potentially yeah. to your to your joints and to the to the technique yeah i was i was going to ask about that too which is how good body weight technique can translate to mobility joint strength the kinds of things that we promote with fbb yeah i mean to be honest like i i i think it's um you know the idea that we need to mobilize and find more range in our our joints is um if people just committed to only moving within their joints capacity like when the, when the technique breaks down even the slightest bit which is hard to perceive if you're an intermediate or you're new to training or even an advanced lifter but if you stop before breakdown and before like again like if I'm doing a, um, a dip, like the moment, like I can't maintain a vertical torso position and I'm not loading the shoulder, but I start to like have my elbows flare out to the side. Like if you stop but right before that moment, then you're really training with well within your current strength and mobility limitations and you're reinforcing good, strong patterns in that position, in those positions. So you're, you're not creating new uh, like a new pain trauma by going through bad ranges of motion and bad uh, technique rather. Like, so you stop before your shoulder gets out of position, which could introduce some shearing forces and some pain. You're reinforcing good positions and you're still going through full range of motion. Like the amount of pain and aches and stuff that people have will come dramatically down. It's recalibrating what failure and what the end of a set is supposed to feel like for people. That's that's a lot of that takes education, it takes practice, it takes commitment. Um, you know, training to failure is not risky if you define failure as the moment technique breaks down, and people have different. You know, like some person's like my technique breaks down when my back squat starts to look like a good morning. It's like, well, that's one way to define it. For me, my technique breaks down as soon as my back squat, I start to feel it in my low back, Yeah, which is at rep six. I could do 12 with this weight, but then I'm just, my back is just taking over. It just becomes a blow back exercise and I'm not getting what I want out of it. And by redefining what these stopping points are, a lot better joint health, a lot better, you know, less fatigue better recovery times, better ability to push more intensity on the next workout. Um, so I, I know I gave a lot of weighted examples, but the same is true for body weight exercises. And this is interesting. I think with, uh, with Cliff in town recently, we're doing a pull-up workout and I was like, you know, I had to, like Cliff's got great upper body pulling strength from all his years as a gymnast. And, I had to kind of tell him like, Hey, I want you to like change your thought process on like when to stop a set, because we're really trying to train this position to train your back in a particular way. And I know you can go further than that, but that's where you're, you're fatiguing at this point. That's when we want to stop. And, uh, I think that was like an eye opener to him too, even an advanced athlete. Yeah. I would love to wrap up this episode with a little homework assignment for people to go and try. Do you have a suggestion? I think, I think going next time you're doing a training session, next time you're doing pump, next time you're doing perform, whatever pillars is you see the strict dip, you see the strict pull up, you see a push up, um, consider just making your first set banded and all that's doing is taking a percentage of your body weight off for the range of motion. Then when you go, and if you already use bands, use a thicker band. Mm -hmm. Okay. Basically just make them easier than you typically do them yep. and see how, what that allows you to do with your position, your f mind muscle connection, which muscles you feel getting the most contraction. Um, I have been in incorporating this a lot into different cycles of persist where I don't, I just say today we're doing banded pull-ups. I don't care how good you are, like do the banded one, right? Um, it's, it's going to give you 
access to just, you know, like, whoa, I'm feeling this in different places. And, uh, and then when you, when you commit to that, you're truly using the body weight exercises to develop muscles and strength. You're not just trying to accomplish the body weight exercise. Mm. It's like, use it as a tool. Don't make it a goal to a, achieve because if you just make it a goal to achieve, that would be like saying, hey guys, we're doing back squats today. So put two, put 225 on the bar because that's what we always do. We always just put 225 on the bar right. and then just go do as many as you can. I don't care how good or bad it looks. It's like, no, no, no. The goal is not to use to do a 225 back squat. The goal is to use the back squat to train the muscles that we want. So use whatever weight works for you. Same thing with pull-ups and with dips and push-ups. Love that. Rock and roll. Yeah. If you try it, let us know how it went. Yeah. Tag us in your banded pull-up videos and then also jump into our DMs so that we don't have to go to chat GPT <laughs> to figure out topics for this podcast. Although this Although, was a fun experiment. You know, and it really, yeah, it was solid. Yeah, it was solid. <laughs> Thanks for listening, everyone. We'll see you next time. We'll see you next time.